it's important. We want to make sure that people and the animals are safe. We know what we think is their habitat, but we really don't know what areas they're actually using. We just have questions. We don't know where these animals move throughout the calendar year. The Nevada National Security Site. 1,360 square miles of land located 65 miles northwest of Las Vegas. Once used for the United States nuclear testing program, the NNSS still hosts the country's most important national security work. Three, two, one, fire. Part of that work includes stewardship of the land and life on the NNSS. This is Tortoise 4046 eating soil. This rugged landscape of the NNSS is home to more than 800 plant species and over 1,500 species of animals. From spring snails to bighorn sheep to mountain lions, the NNSS has an extensive wildlife population. And the NNSS team of ecological and environmental monitoring experts track and study several of these species. The last several years we did a mountain lion project where we, we trapped mountain lions, collared them, tracked them um, from about 2010 to 2017. Um, 2015 and 2016 we did capture events with bighorn sheep. Um, and now we're looking at the mule deer and, and the antelope. So, um, we've also put some satellite um, solar-powered transmitters on burrowing owls in June um, to track them. They're also a migratory species, and so three of our owls captured on site are now in Mexico. Three of them are in California, and one's still here on site. So um, we also have tortoises that we have transmitted um, that we're tracking as well. So we do try and kind of keep a handle on, on some of the populations of, of some of the animals here. And there's no antennas I can cut. But... Now, the United States Geological Survey and Nevada Department of Wildlife are teaming up with the NNSS to study pronghorn antelope and mule deer. Pronghorn antelope are the fastest running hoofed animals in North America. The antelope weigh anywhere from 95 to 125 pounds and in a full sprint can reach up to 60 miles per hour. Mule deer, whose name comes from their large mule-like ears, can weigh between 125 and 330 pounds and can reach speeds of up to 45 miles per hour. So really important, um, especially because of the, the potential for off-site public to receive a dose from contaminated animals. We do have evidence of a uh, bighorn sheep that we had collared a few years ago that went off-site and got shot by a hunter. And we had data to show that uh, there just, there wasn't uh, much of a radiological burden that it had, so the dose was minimal. Well, we know we have large uh, mobile game animals that use the NNSS, and we're trying to understand that use of the site and their interaction with areas that might have radionuclides or um, potential exposure to those animals. And again, uh, potential exposure to anybody that might come in contact with those animals. Radionuclides are radioactive forms of elements that give off energy as they decay. Some radionuclides occur naturally in the environment, while others are man-made. Because of the Nevada National Security Site's history, some areas have higher concentrations of radioactive material compared to off-site areas. The NNSS Ecological and Environmental Monitoring Team is trying to estimate the potential exposure these animals have in case they are hunted off the site. It's careful, difficult, highly regulated work. And then there's regulations, both uh, federal regulations and Department of Energy regulations that rule or guide um, how much exposure these animals can have. In all our sampling previous to this, we haven't shown any doses to people that would be of hazard or any, any issues that would be of concern, but we want to make sure that we're 
understanding where the animals are and if there's any worst case scenario that we're not uh, aware of right now. The study also aims to help these scientists understand movement patterns of these animals and estimate the number of animals that populate the NNSS. To be able to see what kind of habitats these animals are found in. Um, so we'll be able to look at all of the, the data points and figure out what kind of habitat they like to, to live in. Um, might help us also try and count the number of animals that we have of both species um, based on the, the habitat that we find in them. A study this big in an area as secure and large as the NNSS takes lots of planning, partners, and patience. We've been talking about doing this work for well over five years, and, and I know in the last couple years it became a reality of we might being able to get this thing funded. And, and, uh, and so uh, it's been a long time getting it put together and, and seeing it actually happen today. It's been months um, that we've been planning all the paperwork, getting the approvals with the REAP process, um, all the coordination, deconfliction with other activities going on this weekend. So yeah, just it's amazing the amount of, of um, paperwork and collaboration and coordination that's gone into this study. And, and luckily we have people from USGS, from um, NDAL, um, and we've got some people coming in from the Air Force tomorrow. So huge collaborative effort um, for people to come in um, and help with this effort. So it's really, really great, great study. And because of the unique opportunity to perform the study on the Nevada National Security Site, these scientists were excited to jump on board. That is a, a very unique kind of aspect about this study is being on the NNSS, um, unhunted population. So it's kind of a, it's a very pristine environment, uh, really, from, a, from an environmental st standpoint and the animals. So they're not, you know, they're not harvested, they're not uh, hunted by humans. Um, the habitat's in really good condition, it's intact. It provides a really good baseline. It'd be, be beneficial to us kind of compare to other populations around the state maybe are hunted or are impacted in other ways. With more than 90% of the NNSS undisturbed and restricted from the public, the NNSS functions much like a wildlife refuge, providing one of the most pristine ecosystems in Southern Nevada. It's really important because it's an ultimate, I mean, Overall, it is relatively um, pure, pristine site. I mean, yes, there's been activity here, but right now there's habitat that hasn't been touched for a very long time. We started with the Cougar Project, Mountain Lions, and um, that it, it's so important here because this is one of the few areas where we have mountain lion populations that are not hunted. So we have two major areas that we've looked at, and one is in the Desert National Wildlife Refuge. They're not hunted there. And then here, where they're not hunted. And the interesting, they're very interesting populations. They're very different genetically. They're very different, um, just um, the animals that move into this area um, are constant migrants moving in versus the, the National or the uh, Fish and Wildlife Refuge. Uh, those animals are, are relatively isolated. So it's really, really, interesting to see the two populations and compare them and uh, and really to see a population that is relatively untouched. But also um, we were able to gather data on a, on a newly repopulated um, population because there, there used to be bighorn sheep we all think here but now the Department of Wildlife um, has has translocated animals in nearby mountain ranges and some of them have moved on to this site so they've repopulated old habitat, historic habitat. That was very interesting. Oh it's beautiful. I mean it's it's sort of untouched land and it's really it's I think it's a treat for us to be able to be out here and it's so quiet and peaceful and you know, I'm really enjoying the experience of it and being able to, to, to see these animals. And it's nice, they've got some growing populations of both deer and antelope. We've been here um, twice to do uh, sheep captures, but those have been very specifically tied to the mountain that the sheep are on. But this is our first time really moving around. 
order to capture these incredibly fast animals, researchers brought in a helicopter and a highly skilled team. Once a deer or antelope is spotted, the helicopter crew chases the animal into a safe spot and carefully shoots a net over the animal. After landing, the crew puts hobbles on the legs and a blindfold over the eyes to calm the animal. and then puts it in a sling to be carried to a staging area. The pilot has to be incredibly skilled in low-level flying, all while paying attention to the animals, in order to guide them into a safe location to be handed off to the team on the ground. It is also essential to minimize the stress of the animal so they can only be chased short distances to avoid overheating. Then, scientists get to work collecting data. The team from the Nevada Department of Wildlife is interested in the general biology of the animals. As the wildlife health team, we're down here to take the opportunity to collect um, health samples on these animals, which we have never sampled before, and then also make sure that we're supporting uh, with um, veterinary support these animals uh, throughout the capture process to make sure that they come in, they're healthy, they're in good shape, and we get them back out again. Uh, we collect, you know, biological information, so we're collecting measurements in some cases, physical measurements, uh, you know, neck circumference and things like that. Um, we give them a body condition score to kind of assess that, that fat level. Um, blood is going to be, we'll probably do a, a health screening profile on them, just kind of see what kind of maybe diseases are, are, are out here. Um, those are the big things. And then on the animal, you know, we collect health information, so their respiration rate, their temperature and things like that. That's kind of more to manage their immediate you know, health concerns while we're capturing them. After the collars have been placed and all the necessary samples and data have been collected, the animals are released back into the wild. But that is not the end. We want as much data as we can, so we want the collars to be active on these animals for two to three years, and then we'll be analyzing and, and doing our report after that. So we're looking four to five years down the road. The collars placed on these animals will give the scientists valuable tracking information. They will link with satellites to give near real-time movement data over the next three years. Basically, we'll record a coordinate every four hours, so six times a day and then they upload once a day to the satellite um, around 1600 in the afternoon. And we can go in uh, fairly real time with the last, uh, last known location um, within probably 12 to 24 hours anyway and see where those animals are at. Um, it's nice, it has a mortality sensor and so if the animal isn't moving for a certain period of time, um, it'll send us an email that's saying, hey, it's in mortality mode and we can go out, it'll have the coordinates we can go out and look and see where that animal is, see if it really is dead, if there's a malfunction with the collar, or maybe it's a predation event, so we'll be able to track that as well. That data will be used by USGS to create habitat models for each species. It will also analyze how much time the animals spend in contaminated areas and look at movement patterns. After that, the collars will simply fall off the animals at a predetermined date and time. If they have been using the ponds, migrating off-site into an area that's hunted is most important to know. Plus, it's just interesting biologically um, to know where, where this population is moving in from. I mean, this area is, is a new area for pronghorn. For mule deer, they've been here for a very long time. We just don't know anything about them. We don't know um, we know what we think is their habitat, but we really don't know what areas they're actually using.
While the study will continue over the next few years, the capture event is already a success. The team was able to capture radio collar and tag 23 mule deer and 18 antelope. According to the scientists, the animals captured and tagged looked healthy overall. So they're definitely, I would say, probably a little skinnier this time of year compared to some of the more northern herds. Um, but that's not that unusual given we're in a more dry, arid environment, kind of a different moisture regime. So impacts like the fat cycle of the animals slightly differently compared to northern herds. Up. But they've all been, they actually looked in really good shape so far. We haven't seen any, you know, super skinny animals. Um, but yeah, I'd say smaller on average body condition wise compared to some of our northern herds, especially for this, this time of year. The animals themselves looked great. Uh, they were in really good body condition, which is really nice to see because obviously a lot of the grass is pretty dry and may not be at its most nutritious, but they, they, they were fat, they felt you know healthy, they were, nothing was wrong with them. Um, so we, again, don't see any reason that they've got anything going on that we're unaware of. So we're just mainly trying to establish baseline values. While capturing and tagging these animals can be a lot of work, these scientists enjoyed every second of it. And most importantly, everyone on the team and the animals stayed safe. It's gone air. Maxed out the scale, and we're too. It's not so much fun until it, it's over. And then you realize you just had fun. Um, a uh, mature buck in the height of rut is, um, is dangerous and so you've got to be focused and it helps to have the right people around and make uh, a release uh, uneventful. You can't match strength and speed, it's just not going to Oh, well, you know it's the weekend and most people have it up, but for us it's like, yay, <laughs> we're having a great time. Like this is our weekend and we're, we're really enjoying it. <laughs>